All right, good morning and welcome back to FOR242. Had a funny realization here setting up my webcam that I'm wearing the same sweatshirt in every one of my videos for you guys. I come in on the weekend to record these because nobody else is here. Go Red Sox. I do have other shirts, but that's the way it's gone so far. So here we are. So I'm going to take you through the entire operation today. I can't give you a normal pre-lab, obviously, so I'm going to go through the whole thing step by step. We're, of course, back in ArcGIS desktop. We're connecting to our computers remotely. I hope that's worked out so far. If it has not worked out for you, we can, of course, adjust due dates and troubleshoot and do all of that. So the due date is a target. If technical difficulties get in the way of that target, no big deal. So what we are fundamentally doing today is looking for spruce fir stands that are ready to be thinned, and then we want to know how much wood volume we're going to get out of that thing. If you have not seen density management diagram before, I think we looked at some in intro. I don't know if you've seen it since then with Jeff Dubas. I sent him a text and he must be off in the woods somewhere because he has not responded to me. So I'm assuming that you have not seen a density management diagram in some time, if at all. So what this is doing is saying that if you have a certain density of trees, that is the spacing between them. And you have a certain average volume per tree, in this case expressed in cubic meters, which is handy because that's the same unit that is used in the LiDAR data set we have. So say you have 10,000 trees to the acre, that's a wicked dense spacing. Those 10,000 trees are going to grow, 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 and they're going to get bigger as they do. So you see we're going up the y-axis here. We've gone from 0.001 to 0.01 to 0.2, And along here, you have some lines that represent the average diameter of the tree. So at this point, it's just under 10 centimeters diameter, which is about, yay. We have a ruler here, so we can say exactly. Oh, but this is a goodly American ruler. There are no metric markings on there, in any case, about that big. So these trees have grown up, 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 up. And when they hit this line, they can't get any bigger without death by competition. So the smaller trees that are being shaded are going to die from that competition. And if it is not thinned, it will carry on death by competition all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And that's more or less natural stand progression if some other disturbance agent like an insect or a windstorm doesn't come through and knock trees over. If you come up to this point, now let's show a different color. Let's go green. So if you go up, 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 the trees are growing, nothing's dying, everything's going fine. And you get to a certain point and say, oh, time for a thinning. That is going to reduce the density. So say you take it back to 750 trees per acre, or per hectare. That's about a 12 foot spacing, that's what we're going to use in today's exercise. So the average volume has stayed the same. If you were harvesting from below, you would actually have something called the chainsaw effect, where if you're cutting the smaller trees out, the average size of the tree is going to increase. So that's just a, a fun fact. But then, after the thinning, that density is going to remain the same. Some would likely die, but we can assume that that density is what it is, and then it will grow up again, and up, 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 until it hits that maximum density line again. And then you could do another thinning if you so chose, and it would continue on like a staircase there. So hopefully Jeff doesn't get too mad at me for explaining density management diagrams to you in advance. Hopefully that becomes useful to you again. But what we're doing in this exercise is finding any tree or any stand where the piece size, I'm going to check my numbers here, where the piece size is greater than 0.1. So above this line, I should use another color here. So where the piece size is greater than 0.1. 
so it's got to be bigger than that. So anything down here is out. And it's got to have at least 1,300 trees per acre. So 1,011. Hmm, well, no, that scale's wrong. So that's not wrong. I'm just reading it wrong. So more than 11,000 trees per acre. And anything in here is what we're looking for. So we want to take anything that's above this density and bring it back to this density. So we want to go from here to here. And that means that we're thinning our stands. So we have it where it's too dense. They're going to start competing with each other and start killing each other through competition. And we want to bring that down to a point where they're growing free. And then they will grow up to a goodly size, 26 centimeters diameter is a goodly saw log size, without killing each other through competition. And then we could repeat that if we so chose. So, we are selecting this. And we are bringing it over into this condition, or exactly this condition of 750 trees per hectare, which is a 12 foot spacing. So, <clears throat> that's a pretty convoluted diagram. Long story short, we're thinning our trees. And we want to make sure that we know how much wood we're going to get when we do that. Otherwise, it might not be a worthwhile operation to do with a particular piece of machinery. So, through the student materials drive, we can go into data sets for student use. From data sets for student use, map and LiDAR interpretation. And then right at the top, I've put lab area zero. So this is a data set we're going to access for several labs. So there we go. And you can scroll down and see the Dubis lab area. That's the one. Double click on that. And that'll open up the data set you've been becoming familiar with in the online. And we're going to work with it on the desktop now. So once that loads up, what we're going to be doing is writing an attribute query. And this is something you can just copy and paste straight into things. So I'm actually going to copy that right now because I have time. And what that's going to do, find me stands where the hardwood percentage is less than 20%. So first, is this a spruce fir stand that we're thinning? Because that density management diagram is specific to spruce and fir. And then we want to say where the piece size is greater than 0.1. Because if it was less than 0.1 cubic meters per tree, that would be a pre-commercial thinning where you'd be going in with brush saws and not harvesting any wood. But we're looking for softwood that needs thinning, so the density is too high, trees per hectare greater than 1300. So softwood, where it's big enough to commercially thin, and where there's enough trees that is necessary and worthwhile to do. So that brings us over to here and we are working with the forest inventory okay. layer which we can open up here right click open attribute table and that gets us to our attribute table and that has all this big slew of data including height basal area trees per hectare is one we're using piece size is one we're using hardwood percent is one we're using. So three of these attributes are going to play into this. So this goes from 0 to 1, where 1 is 100%, 0 is 0 percent, 0.25 here is 25 percent. So that's how that number works. To select by attributes, that's this one, one to third from the left, select by attributes. That brings up this window that is wicked familiar to me, but is pretty clunky when you're first starting to use it. It's meant to be user friendly. Once you really get used to it, it is. But it's not a great way to learn. This is similar to the filtration step you did in your last assignment. So in this case, you're selecting where before you were only filtering. To say the ones that meet these criteria will be shown on the map. Slightly different. So now I'm just going to paste in 
all that, including the quotation marks. So it's asking, give me those cells where the hardwood percentage is less than 0.2, so spruce fir, where the piece size is big enough to cut with a machine, and where the trees per hectare, where the density is high enough that it needs to be thinned. Anything less than that, we're going to accept that it can grow for a while and be okay, but that density is too much. So, apply. And 1,705 out of 10,255 have been selected. And you'll see that these are in specific locations. So, mature hardwood, mature hardwood, mature hardwood. Down in the wetter, wetter areas, you have spruce and fir. So some of this is in a riparian buffer within the 250-foot uh, buffer off this lake. And some of it is in a spruce and fir flat that would be appropriate for an operation. So with this selection made, we want to create this as its own data set. To do that, right-click on Forest Inventory, Data, Export Data. And this you'll want to save to your own Google Drive file stream and you should have logged into that from the beginning. Sorry if I forgot to mention that, but just like every other lab, you can now log into your Google Drive file stream. So I'm just going to send that into my discard folder because I don't need to keep this, but you'll send it into your Google Drive file stream. So that'll be spruce fir. Let's see, over zero, 01 over 1300. So this is going to create a new layer okay, that is only those selected things. So that practice of selecting and then exporting is something you do again and again and again in GIS because you have this big in input data set and you only want the part of it that meets your specified criteria, which is these. And now, if you zoom in, let's just make that hollow so we can see what's going on. We can see, so that doesn't show very well, let's make that red outline. So these are the cells that have been selected. And if you zoom in, you'll see that I generally agree with the way this has interpreted this. There's some cells that's obviously not going to be merchantable. That's a beaver swamp. Might have been flooded before or after this, but looks like a pretty recent flooding. You can see a lot of the crowns are still there. In any case, there's more. I definitely agree with that being spruce and fir. I definitely agree with that being not recently operated, ready for a thinning. So the query has worked. Go me. So now we have some new attributes that we want to calculate out here. And I'm going to do a little trick here that if I open up this attribute table, you see there's all these attributes. This is way more than I really need to be looking at. But if I go into, by right clicking, the properties of that layer, and then I go to the fields tab, which is here, I can first turn all fields off, and that means none of them will show. I want the feature ID. I want the trees per hectare, I want piece size, let's see, and then I want, let's see, removal times piece size, I think that's what I need, yeah, good, good. Okay, so I really just need trees per hectare and piece size for this calculation that I'm doing. Okay, so now if I open that attribute table, that's all I see. So the data still exists, they haven't gone anywhere. I've just turned them off so I don't see them. So now I need to add four fields. All of these are going to be type double. So to add a field, table options drop down. add field. And this will not work if you're in an editing session. To add a field, you have to be out of an editing session. To edit things, you have to be in an editing session. It's a safety feature that is kind of ridiculous and they've done away with it in ArcGIS Pro. So, 
type double. So the first one I'm going to make removal. And that is going to be how many trees I'm taking out. The next one is going to be vol M3. And that is going to be total volume in cubic meters being removed. And now I've done that wrong. I didn't change that field type. So right click, delete field. Yes. And then add field and type double and then again vol m3 cubic meters another one add field type double vol t for the total volume and then add field and that is going to be the value in dollars. Type double again. So now we get to work with a field calculator. And this is just like writing an equation in Excel, where this cell times that cell equals whatever. In this case, we want to say we have trees per hectare of 1,940, and we want to have 750 trees when we're done. So 1,940 minus 750 is going to be whatever it happens to be, and this is how you find out what that is for every one of these. So, right-click on Removal, Field Calculator, Removal, so this field will equal, and you don't have to type in any equals because that's already there for you, so that's a little different from Excel. So the Removal field will equal trees per hectare minus 750. And that 750 is what we want left over. So the remainder is that for every one of these cells. So we have 1940 when we start, and we're going to remove 1190. And now the average piece size is 0.228 cubic meters. So we are removing 1190 trees that are 0.2228 meters each. And that's different for every one of these cells. So now, volume in cubic meters, right click, field calculator, delete the old statement, and we want it to be piece size times removal. So, this many trees at that size. Okay. Ah, but I've made an error. So, this is a good opportunity to show you how to recalculate things. So, removal shall equal trees per hectare minus 750 times the area in hectares. Because there's not 1,190 trees in this small area. So, right click, field calculator, and I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need this again later. So right click, copy. So now removal equals, and this is written in the assignment that I didn't read. Good job. So trees per hectare minus 750 divided by, or not divided by, times 0. Point zero three nine nine seven seven and I'm going to remove that space for good luck okay so now you see how that's changed there are actually 47.57263 trees to be removed because this is a small fraction of a hectare every one of these cells is about 0 0.04 hectares or exactly 0 0.039977, which is where that comes from. So now I need to recalculate this using the field calculator. I'm going to delete that. And the thing that I copied before, I will now paste in and watch how this changes. So now this is the actual volume that I anticipate removing. So now volume total is... Ah that volume T. I didn't read my own assignment. This is bad. 
So volume T is volume in tons because we have a price in tons for the state of Maine from this dumpage report. So to get, convert from cubic meters to tons, uh, yeah. oh, well, field calculator, and that's going to be volume in cubic meters times 1.43. So that's the conversion factor for that. So we are going to remove 15 tons. And now we need to find the stumpage rate for spruce and fir pulpwood, I guess. Yeah, pulpwood is what I asked for. Look at me reading my assignment now. And the way you find that, go to your web browser and search Maine Stumpage Report. The annual reports from the Maine Forest Service will give you that. And you don't want the Silvicultural Activities Report, you want the 2018 Stumpage Price Report published quite recently. Ish. So, and did I ask for Aroostook County? Yes, I did. So, Aroostook County, so scroll down, page 6, is going to be da, 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 spruce fir pulp, 2018 average was $9. And I'm sure you all know well in two years a lot changes. This is a useful document in tracking how prices change over time, but it's always a year or two out of date. So we'll use $9. So that goes away and that goes away. So now if I right click on value, field calculator, and the value is going to be the volume in tons times nine. So $9 per ton, 15.15683 tons. Okay, so now that cell will return $136 in stumpage value. Stumpage value is the price paid by the logger to the landowner for the right to harvest and sell the wood. That's of course not how a big company like Irving or Landvast or Seven Islands operates. They're paying a contractor to do the job, usually on a per cubic meter basis. But it is a useful number that we have, so that is profit to the landowner for the sale of the wood. And the logger will generally take care of the other costs of the operation, the, the gas, the uh, road building, whatever. And that is the check that he writes to the landowner. So if we want to know the total, we can right click, statistics. And the sum of all of those, if we thinned every one of these, $360,809.98. But that is not the way that we normally do that. So, if you, first of all, if you do that, make sure that value matches what I just showed. So if you do that, that's point number five. Again, reading my own assignment. So point number five requires you to get that number. And then, once you've done that, the object of the game is to manually select a block. And that's good because that's what I was about to do without reading my assignment. But that means to look around and say, all right, this road can be improved to be used again. I don't think you could drive on it right now, but you could do that. And the way that you select things here, Select Features, little drop down, Select by Lasso, or Select by Polygon. Let's go with Select by Polygon. So, let's say that you want to thin this block. We can one click to start, click to continue, 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 and you are just going around this block that you're proposing and you are making sure that all of those cells that you want are within it. And that is selected all of those. So now, if I go back into the attribute table, those are the ones selected. I can right click on the value, ask for the statistics, 
and the landowner can expect a check for $46,280.74. Of course, that is an estimate, and a variety of real life factors will get in the way of it, but that is the volume that is estimated, and from that volume comes a value, and from that value comes a total. So that is how that works. And now to turn that into an actual block boundary, geoprocessing dissolve, where the input feature is the layer here, spruce fir, over 0.1 cubic meters, with a density over 1300. So that's again going to my default folder, you would want to send that to your Google Drive file stream. And we don't want to do anything to any of this, and that doesn't matter because it's only got one contiguous feature. So let's go ahead and hit OK, but if I left that checked and if I made a second selection over here it would get just one attribute row for both of those. If I unchecked that it would have two attribute rows. Anyway, okay. So that has become our block boundary. And if I uncheck that, I can make that hollow. And that is the block boundary, which has a value of, what do we say, 46, 46, 280. And of course, I can change that text to be bright red and large. But that, if you completed that whole setting with the way we've calculated this out, you would expect the landowner to get a check for $46,280 and 74 cents, as the case may be. So that is the thing you will use to make your final map. So let's see what I'm asking for. Standard map an uninformed reader should be able to understand exactly the criteria used and what operation is planned. So that is, these are the criteria you use. Don't just copy that, but interpret in plain English what these three things are. And then provide a label on the block. And in that case, you would want to say something like, that, but you would want to make it very clear to an uninformed reader, picture just handing this off to Jeff Dubas without any other kind of explanation, that you're doing a thinning in spruce and fir. That thinning is going to leave 750 trees per acre. The remainder are going to be harvested. Their volume totals up to this, which at a rate of $9 per ton gives you this much stumpage. So that's what you're doing. And let's see, coordinate system, UTM grid, north arrow, air photo or hillshade background. Explore this. You can check on any one of these things. That would show some slope constraints to the operation. Explore what we have available here. It's all right there at your fingertips. It's just a matter of which one you turn on. So that is the very basic block layout for LiDAR derived forest inventory. Done more or less like this every day in the field and really easy to do where you have a layer prepared like this. So say all of a sudden, oh, I can get the other side of the road too. Let's go all the way up here with these preparations made. I can very quickly find out that if I worked on the other side of the road too, I'd make another $53,000, so it's probably worthwhile to do both sides of the road while I've got a machine there. If I clear that selection and say, all right, we're going to go down this other road as well, just that fast to find out that the volume removed, or the value removed in that case, will be $55,901.29. Of course, this gives, you a, gives the impression of ridiculous precision. It is an estimate. Don't get too married to the idea that this is the absolute truth. This is an estimate derived from a model, 
calibrated with check plots, came from a LiDAR point cloud, it was taken in 2015. The trees have either grown or died since then. So, 2015 data, 2020 now, five year gap, how much can happen to a tree or a forest in five years? A whole lot. So, there's a pretty good chance some of this is already schwacked. This was operated, this whole Jeff Dubis Memorial Forest was operated in the last year. So there's a really good chance you go out here and find it's already done. And there's no, nothing to do. And the volume that you're measuring and calculating based on doesn't exist. So LiDAR is a snapshot in time. It gives you outstanding information, but you have to interpret it with good judgment and critical thought. So this is five-year-old data. Best case, the trees have grown and you have more stumpage value. Worst case, somebody got to it before you. Worst, worst case, windstorm blew it over three years ago. Nobody noticed the wood has already decayed and you have a terrible loss on your hands of looks like about $150,000. So that's why you still have to go out, walk around, give the straight face test, do a little bit of classical forest inventory, actual measurements, basal area measurements, figure out if the volume that this thing is giving you is actually realistic. So it's a tool. It gives an impression of extreme precision, but you have to do your own interpretation of it. You have to be out there to the back of this block in the field, checking it to make sure that all the way out here or all the way back here, the trees actually exist. But it's an awesome tool. It allows you to find wood that you might not have otherwise found. It allows you to make predictions about where dangerous areas are going to be and then go out and check them and prevent accident and injury in that way. With uh, something they don't have here but they're working on is the wet or depth to water table mapping, which is going to be important in a stand like this because as you get close to that wet area down in the middle, it might be really shallow to water, especially this time of year, mud season, you put a machine in that, blah, 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 it's no longer frozen. So all of those things give you information that you have to interpret. That should be enough to keep you busy for a while. Again, if you have technical difficulties, if computers won't let you log on, the due dates are targets. So let me know. Keep me appraised to your situation, and we'll make this thing work. So, hope you're having a great time, great as it can be, and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you soon. Good luck, stay healthy until then.